Good Friday, everyone. I hope you've had a great E3 week. I had a nice relaxing time watching the conferences, taking a little break from reviews while E3, aka Gamer Christmas, was going on. But now that it's over, it's time to get back into site work and get back into reviews. The last video review I did was on a Gus title from the Atelier series, so I deemed it appropriate to do a new video review on another Gus series. And yes, that's an excuse just because this game is the last Vita game that I've actually beaten. So, let's go away from the Atelier series and go to a series that is connected to the R. Tonalico games. Here is my review of the Vita and PSTV version, R. No Surge Plus, Ode to an Unborn Star. Arno Surge is a science fiction story that takes place on a giant spaceship. Several hundred years before the game started, the planet humankind was living on was dying and they attempted to use powerful skills known as song magic to convert the planet into energy and teleport its population to a new planet, however this failed, resulting in the planet being destroyed, requiring all of humankind to live on board a spaceship. At present day, we see humankind at war with an alien race known as the Sharl. These Sharl are constantly attacking the barrier around the human city trying to get in for various reasons from their own church of human followers and others. You take the role of Delta, an ex-military who begins traveling to help end the Sharl threat, but also ends up discovering everything that's really going on. There's a bit of skepticism around the story because Arno Surge is actually a sequel to CL No Surge, and CL No Surge never came west. A lot of people believe that you need to research and basically read through the entire CL No Surge script to be able to understand Arno Surge, and while that does help, it is not absolutely required. You can go through the entire game, and there are a lot of scenes that actually tell you about past events, so you're not confused in the story. Despite this being a sequel, it can work as its own standalone game. Arno Surge is an RPG that has a lot of console style RPG standards, like dungeons to crawl through, enemies to fight, and story events to spawn, but it is unique in three different gameplay systems. The first is the zapping system. As you go through the story, you'll be progressing through chapters, playing and controlling two separate groups of protagonists that are journeying in different places but at the same time. Once you get to a point in one group's storyline, the episode will lock, which means you'll need to zap and switch control to the other group and use information that you got with the first group to proceed their storyline. It'll be a constantly switching back and forth until the game actually tells you that you need to go to the other side to proceed the storyline. You can't keep going with the story with one group without the other being able to catch up. The second gameplay system that's unique is the dive system. This is similar to something from the Artana Liga series, but as you go through the story and you learn more about characters, they will link with you, allowing you to go to a dive shop to essentially upload yourself into their subconscious mind. You go through a story arc where you learn about this person's subconscious world, see what fears and troubles they have, and help them fix them. If you get through an entire dive, you'll get new song magic to use in battle. These are all optional, but one thing I want to say is that these dives are particularly immersive. These aren't like little side quests where you get three or four cutscenes and you get new skills. You actually have to go through an entire story arc to do this. One of the very first dives I did in Arno Search Plus took me over an hour to complete. These are immersive, deep storylines, even though they're not part of the main plot of the game. Final thing is we'll talk about how combat works. When you first go into combat, you have to choose a song magic spell to use for the duration of the battle. These have different effects, so you might want to choose whichever one will benefit you the most in the battle. Once you choose this song magic, you are put in front of waves of enemies that represent the entire dungeon's collection of random encounters. Fighting enemies is a matter of breaking enemies and watching your burst and song magic gauges. Attacking enemies is pretty simple enough. You have a set number of attacks you can use each turn and attacks increase the, the two gauges I just mentioned. Now, the song magic gauge will increase, will go to different tiers or levels. Once you get level one and onward you can unleash your song magic to effectively end the battle 
and that also coincides with the burst gauge. As you fight more enemies, you'll see a little percentage go up after wave after wave are destroyed. This represents how much of the entire dungeon's enemies you can wipe out when you unleash your song magic. If you use 10%, it only unlocks 10% and you're gonna be fighting a lot more battles. If you keep going until you hit 100%, you can wipe out the entire dungeon's arsenal of enemies in one go. This is also very suggested upon because when you do it like that, you get higher grades and the higher grade you get, you get a multiplier that multiplies your experience and money you get. You go through 10%, you might get 200 experience with no multiplier. You go 100%, you might get 500 experience with a times 4 multiplier resulting in 2,000 experience in one battle. The only things we have left to talk about are difficulty spikes and length. Just to get it out there, after you fight through battles, you will be able to level up and increase your stats. The difficulty is something I really think is worth noting in any review of this game. A lot of times when you end a chapter, the difficulty of the game spikes a lot, but the game kind of hints to tell you when these spikes are happening. Every so often you'll go into a dungeon and you'll find pretty doable battles that'll give you a ton of experience. I'm talking about being able to level up every battle. When this happens, I would highly advise that you make a sa backup save or stop to grind some levels. I'm not talking about spending 5 hours grinding, but maybe 30 minutes, an hour, just to get a few extra levels to prepare you for what's ahead. Because when the difficulty spikes, it's a pretty decent spike. And when the difficulty spikes with bosses, all of the enemies spike too. So you have a situation where you can have a backup save and grind some levels for easy experience, or you can go onward and have really hard battles with not very much experience. That's kind of a no-brainer. And finally, we have length. If you rush through the game and don't do much extra, you could probably get the game done in about 35 hours. I topped 34 hours. I did a fair amount of exploration in the first half of the game, but in the latter half of the game, I didn't do very much in the terms of getting special items for different endings. If you do that, I would say it's more like 40 hours. Regardless, it's going to take up a lot of your time. Once you beat the game, there's not really much replayability except for different endings. There's no New Game Plus feature, you just unlock the extra feature in the title menu that gives you artwork and music and all of that. Now, visually, PS Vita gamers know what to expect of Gust RPGs. Just like the PS3 version, it looks beautiful. There's a lot of impressive cell shading and details gone in here, but since this is not a brand new Gus title, performance kind of suffers from this. Frame drops happen in the game, and they happen a lot, and they're pretty significant. At one point, I was in a battle, and almost every battle animation had the game freezing for two or three seconds at a time before the animation would actually finish. This isn't the norm, but just know that there are some pretty significant frame drops in the game. So if you're on the fence between a PS3 and PS Vita game and frame drops really bother you, well, you know where I'm going with this. The other problem I have with the uh, presentation is the audio. English audio is done pretty well. I really liked the fact that Kampa's voice actor did one of the main characters, but the voice acting will often not match the text dialogue that's going on in the story. This isn't a huge deal if you're just listening, but if you're nitpicky about that kind of stuff, it's going to be pretty easy to notice. Arno Surge is one of those games that I feel is a type of story in RPG that doesn't go to the handheld world very often. While the Vita version does suffer from a lot of frame drops and some mismatched voice work, I think it's worth checking out both for Gust fans and for sci-fi fans in general. You just don't get that many sci-fi RPGs on the Vita anymore. Reviews to Go rates Arno Surge Plus an 8 out of 10. 
If you have any comments, please leave them below, or you can head to my site, www.reviews2go.com, to check more reviews, my PlayStation TV compatibility list that is updated almost daily, or you can head there to check out my Patreon page.